Hello and welcome from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events, the week beginning the 17th of March. Following um, a fairly poor week last week for equities, uh, with the FTSE, S&P, Dow, and the DAX all falling quite sharply. In fact, the DAX falling over 300 points in the, on the week last week. That's over three and a quarter percent. The S&P and the Dow. They eventually gave up on Thursday following the fairly poor Chinese data uh, with the Dow uh, shedding nearly uh, 400 points on the week or 2.4 percent. The S&P down 37 on the week, which is uh, just a shade less than 2 percent. So a bad week for equities. Um, really worries about the world's second largest economy resulted in the, those steep falls on Thursday in the US. Um, I think the concerns about this ludicrous referendum in the UK, Ukraine uh, and the Crimea, I should say, has put pressure on the European markets, especially the DAX, as uh, German companies are seen to be suffering the most when or if sanctions are imposed on Russian banks, Russian companies and individuals uh, linked to the uh, regime. Um, no sort of Surprises on the data last week, really, uh, mostly sort of hitting consensus. They're a little bit mixed, but nothing there was nothing stand out really. Um, Chinese data has been worrying, worryingly weak over the past two months, with almost all data missing consensus, prompt, prompting uh, quite a few analysts last week to downgrade uh, Chinese growth this year to be well below the official state target of seven seven and a half percent. Um, Chinese economy news is, is really, I, I guess you could call it a slow burn issue that will play itself out over time. But it was interesting uh, the way that uh, the US eventually capitulated last week, which may have been partly as a result of the Crimean situation. But uh, there seems to be more focus on the Chinese um, state of the Chinese economy for now. Um, in um, the, EU, uh, the Russia uh, this morning, the MySex has uh, rallied a bit. The Russian ruble is sort of bubbling along the sort of bottom, really, remaining at historic lows versus the US dollar. And it's difficult to know what other effects there will be on the markets. Uh, a lot of money has been flooding out of Russia for years. Uh, Russian banks will be excluded from mainstream financial markets. Uh, and the rich and the powerful connected to Putin uh, could have their assets frozen. Um, what other impacts? Maybe UK property prices will slow down with all that Russian money if, if indeed the sanctions are imposed. Uh, so the markets are fairly cautious uh, this morning, uh, cautiously positive in fact in light of the Crimean referendum which is probably more of a reflection of the sharp falls from last week uh, which had probably priced in much of the bad news uh, so far. So we're really waiting for Obama and the European Union and the UK to see what measures are taken uh, to punish uh, Russia. Um, I guess Putin has really boxed himself in on, on, on the Crimea um, issue because uh, having invaded the Crimea with uh, the Russian army, um, he really couldn't uh, stop it from then on. Uh, Crimea will become part of Russia following this so-called referendum and the West probably will impose sanctions and then it then depends on what steps Russia takes in reaction to those sanctions. But uh, I suspect that there's a lot of diplomacy going on behind the scenes, but we do expect sanctions to take place. So whilst all that's playing out, we've got a fairly um, bull, uh, busy calendar uh, this week. Um, with uh, certainly for the UK and the US. We've got the budget here in the UK and we've got uh, the FOMC in the States. Uh, so let's just have a quick look at the calendar for this week, starting with uh, Monday the 17th. Um, it used to be regarded as more important than it's uh, suggested here, the Empire State Manufacturing Index. This is the first measure of manufacturing in the States uh, this week. We've got the Philly Fed on Thursday. The Empire State uh, being the New York uh, state um, is an in a useful precursor, but uh, all these measures are pointing to a rebound in manufacturing activity uh, following the really poor weather on the eastern seaboard, although I note that uh, we're in the middle of a fairly uh, intense uh, storm on the eastern seaboard with a half foot of snow forecast for New York state, for example. So um, that's the first bit of news this afternoon. Remember, all the, this is still coming out uh, an hour earlier at 12.30 as we've remained with a four-hour difference between us and the States. Our clocks eventually going forward on the 30th of uh, March, uh, thus uh, going back to the same, the usual five-hour difference. Um, Tuesday, we got the very, very important ZEW economic sentiment indicator. Um, 
Softening a little bit from the previous month of 55.7, we're expecting 52.8. Uh, we've got building permits and the, the inflation data out in the States in the afternoon at 12.30. Building permits, uh, nice leading indicator for the housing market. Uh, that is closely followed and that will can have an impact on the market. Inflation is very much under control unless there's any extreme reading on that. I don't think that'll have any effect uh, from the CPI. Uh, and then that leads us into uh, Wednesday where we've got uh, minutes from the Monetary Policy Committee uh, meeting uh, with votes on the asset purchase uh, facility, the QE, and also um, on interest rates. It'll be interesting to see how that um, pans out. We've also got the unemployment uh, claimant count at, at the same time at 9.30. And then in the afternoon at 12.30, we've got the UK budget presented by George Osborne, uh, which these days tends not to provi uh, provide too many surprises because a lot of it is uh, pre-released to a certain extent. Um, for example, uh, the, the, the help to buy scheme that's already been announced, that's uh, going to be extended uh, considerably, which has helped the uh, house builders um, this morning here in London. So, um, and then in the evening, we have the uh, Federal Open Market Committee meeting, the first uh, one chaired by Janet Yellen. We're expecting a continuation of the uh, QE, sorry, the second one um, held by Janet Yellen, I should say. Um, we're expecting uh, a continuation of the tapering of the QE by another 10 billion, followed by um, a press conference held at 6.30 at our time. That's more likely to cause ripples in the market. But remember, the market's going to be shutting earlier, as they will do up until the 30th. So the US markets will be closing at 8 o'clock, so only an hour and a half trading time up until the close there. Um, and then we have um, US data on, on Thursday, um, quite uh, regular weekly unemployment claims, existing home sales, that's sort of not quite so important, but it's always a good measure of the housing activity. And then the um, main manufacturing data of the week, which is the U.S. Philadelphia uh, District Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. Again, in keeping with the uh, um, Empire State Index, we're looking for an improvement following the cold weather at the beginning of the year. Uh, 4.2 is the consensus there. And that's really it for the rest of the week. We do have the public sector borrowing requirement uh, in the UK on Friday, but uh, it has less importance these days. If you're trading UK gilts, it may have an effect, obviously, but uh, it tends not to have too many uh, ramifications. Uh, good, that's it for uh, the news and events this week. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.